This is Covering the Spread, part of the FanDuel Podcast Network. The NFL draft is in the books. It was fun as always, and it now means we basically got a pretty clear picture of what these rosters will look like heading into week one. It is time to talk some win totals, time to wrap up the draft by talking to Ryan Williams, getting his read on this year's draft, talking about some win totals, overs, unders, the buzzy teams from the draft, and where he is leaning, where things stand right now. This is covering the spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network and at numberfire.com. My name is Jim Sonis. I am a senior writer and analyst for number fire joined here as mentioned by ryan williams check him out on twitter at ryan alexander underscore w ryan the draft is in the books welcome back how you doing today oh man i'm doing well it's may 1st we are gearing up for all the fun stuff man uh off-season workouts we know the training camps right around the corner as soon as we get to the summertime um it's going to be it's going to be Right. And we're probably about just a week and a half away from the schedule release, um, which is yeah. always a fun time, Jim. So, you know, we're just getting back into the group. It's 365 as always. And uh, when the schedule comes out, it means I have to update my spreadsheet to like have all the. So like it's like, oh, yeah, the schedule's out. It's like, oh, yeah, the schedule's out. I have to like go through and edit my <laughs> spreadsheet to actually have it like be appropriate there. Uh, we'll talk about the you know, buzz your teams in the draft, but you know, your, your bears, I think did pretty well. I like, um, I I like Darnell Wright quite a bit because I do, I will pull some weight adjust numbers for the combine and Darnell Wright kind of pretty good in that regard. Like 99th percentile broad jump, uh, adjusting for weight. So, uh, thoughts on your bears, uh, from this year's draft. Yeah, definitely like the, the offensive line pick. I mean, you know, I think they could have gone a number of ways. I know that people mm-hmm. wanted them to draft Peter uh, Skronsky, the kid, mm-hmm. you know, kid from Chicago. I was just so overhearing how many people from Chicago the Bears were bringing in. It was like we can't bring everybody back home. Right. Uh, let's get the let's get what we think is the best player available. And you know, I think uh, there are a lot of things to like about Darnell. Right. You also it was kind of rumored that the bears were going in that direction about 48 hours, 36 hours before the draft. Um, So you love when those things kind of come to fruition. Right. But I think, you know, they did a good job as far as, you know, pretty much like need based drafting. Um, Yeah. You, you know, that they had made splash moves in the off season, love to see that something that they hadn't done before. And I think in this draft, they just, you know, kind of wanted to go in and get some players and, and play it safe. And that's totally fine. Um, when you have looked at how the drafts have gone in the past, I do love them, you know, trading back. I do wish that we could have gotten more than a fourth. I shouldn't say we, sure. I do wish that they would have gotten more <laughs> than a fourth from Philly, um, for the Jalen Carter trade, knowing how much that was going to mean to Philly, but you know, you mm-hmm. get another pick and that's what, that's what you do. And you try and, uh, you try and just shore up, shore up the team. So, uh, I was happy with it. There weren't too many other, um, splash plays that I thought, but I think that, you know, when you're looking at things, this Tyler Scott kid from Cincinnati yeah. is interesting um, that they bring in for receiver in the fourth round. We know what, and this is a different regime, but, you know, historically the Bears have been doing well the past couple of years with these mid-round picks. So mm-hmm. we're hoping that that one pans out as well, too. Um, and, yeah, I, th- I just think it was, a, it was a safe draft. I didn't think there were any splash players, but I definitely love seeing them get trenches with the first two picks. Yeah, and I think that they attacked areas of need, which is kind of what you said, where – they needed a right tackle pretty badly. They needed wide receiver help, needed DT help, which they got a lot of. Um, so kind of just attacking the needs, uh, going to some high value positions like cornerback and stuff like that, wide receiver. So I thought it made a lot of sense. I think that, you know, again, they're making good moves this offseason. We'll see if that pans out. But I think the overall trajectory is pretty good there. We're going to dive into the draft, talk about Ryan's biggest takeaways from what we saw Thursday through Saturday and dissect all that here in just one second. But first, a reminder to make sure you're subscribed to Covering the Spread wherever you get your podcast. I think it's especially crucial this week because I had a schedule for this week. We're going to have two shows today. Uh, Kentucky Derby podcast coming up later on today. Christina Blacker of FanDuel TV will be on to break down her thoughts on the post draw. Just happening 
That Churchill Downs today. We'll talk about that. Then tomorrow, we'll talk some golf with Brandon Gadula, talk some NBA playoffs as well. No show Wednesday because we have three of the first two days. So, especially important to make sure you're subscribed for this week with the odd schedule here on Covering the Spread. Just search for Covering the Spread wherever you get your podcasts or check us out over on the Fandle YouTube page. Thumbs up there or a five star rating if you like what you hear over on Apple Podcasts. Speaking of the Derby. The biggest horse race of the year is here, and there's no better time to get in the action on FanDuel Racing, because right now, all customers can get a no-sweat derby bet up to $20. That means get up to $20 back if your win bet doesn't win. The FanDuel Racing app is super easy to use, safe and secure, and when you win, you get paid fast. So don't miss out. The Derby is coming up this Saturday. Just visit racing.fanduel.com for your chance to get a no sweat Derby bet up to $20 on Fanduel Racing. That's racing.fanduel.com. Age and residency restrictions apply. Offer valid on first Derby win wager. Refund issued is in non withdrawable racing site credit that expires on June 12th, 2023. Restrictions apply. See terms at racing.fanduel.com. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. Now, before we talk specific win totals, Ryan, I do want to talk about the draft and go through that. And I want to ask about your takeaways with the caveat here being it doesn't impact win totals a lot uh, because the draft capital is already baked in. So I was, you know, pulling recapped win totals mm-hmm. for today and there were only like three that moved and only one moved towards the under. So obviously there's a lot of optimism across the board for a lot of people. Uh, but when you look at this year's draft, any big betting takeaways for you from what we saw there? Um, so big takeaways for me is just looking at what's going on in the NFC East um, mm-hmm. because the Philadelphia Eagles had a pretty solid draft. I know we're going to talk about them later, but so did the Giants too, um, addressing a lot of positions at need and really just kind of showing up both sides of the football. Um, we know the Cowboys, uh, they always are tending to make splash plays and, and things that they do um, in the draft and beyond. Uh, I think that division is really going to be key. Um, we talked earlier um, earlier this year in March, I believe, when we were doing covering the spread after the season and kind of just like what was happening in free agency and stuff like that. Like, Jim, I don't know what's, you know, I still don't have faith in the Tennessee Titans um, yeah. and what's going on in the AFC South. Uh, the Jacksonville Jaguars didn't even have really that that strong of a draft, traded back a couple times, but I thought there were some other positions that they could have addressed. Indy probably had the best, one of the best drafts as, as well, too. I know that people are kind of unsure about the quarterback there and Anthony Richardson and what he's going to bring to the table, but you love that they, you know, are kind of just going all in on that direction, knowing that they've made two disastrous moves at quarterback in free agency over the past two seasons. So um, I think that 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 is one division or those are two divisions where I'm looking at win total specifically um, on the teams that are not favored at the top. Yeah, the Dallas one is interesting because I I've got them above their win total right now. Their win total at FanDuel is nine and a half. Now it's minus uh, 150 on the over. Yeah. So it's uh, 60% implied odds right. to go over. I have a 10.3 wins. I find that very interesting. I not like actively seeking out the Cowboys because I think that their receiver room is still a bit lacking. Um, so I think it's a bit odd that they're so high, but the defense is pretty good and stuff like that. Going back to Indy. I think that they just like sorted by athleticism and then drafted based on that. You know, you can like if you're doing a fantasy football draft, you can sort by ADP. They sorted by freakishness and went by that. Anthony Richardson, obviously the big one. But like even after that, like a lot of the guys they drafted are just like outliers in terms of how athletic they are. Um, they got the defensive tackle from Northwestern who tested, I think he ran like a four, four, nine at 200 and something like a lot of, a lot of weights, uh, ran really well there. Evan Hall right. from Northwestern had a good 40 as well. Blake Freeland was a fourth round lineman for them, uh, to BYU. And he, one of the most athletic tackles at the combine. So they just went for freaks and like, I'm not sure if it'll work out because like a lot of these guys are high variance picks and a lot of them didn't go in the first round for a reason but honestly ryan i respect the commitment to just drafting because football is an athletic competition you might want good athletes for that and the colts at least did lean into that absolutely no absolutely and i mean that's where the when you see like i think 
the Eagles were trying to mirror everything after what just happened in the Super Bowl against Kansas mm-hmm. City. And they, I, I think they truly believe they were the better team. They were the more athletic team and some things just got away from them. So I think they were just how many playmakers can we get on both sides of the football, especially on the D line, getting the guys from Georgia. Now they have the four defensive linemen from the Georgia 2021 defense. Uh, that was one of the best defensive lines of all time uh, in college mm-hmm. football. So, you know, and then I think people just try and mirror off of that. Like everybody saw the success that Philly had just from making an athletic offense and knowing where the state of NFL is going. And let's just try and get get that going on our side. If we can't, nobody's going to not everybody's going to get a Trevor Lawrence, right? Not everybody's right. going to get a generational pocket passer or quarterback in the draft. So if you can take some chances on on these other guys and and see, you know, how that equates to a Jalen Hurts or a Lamar Jackson, et cetera, et cetera, um, then you can feel like you have a shot to be able to do some other things um, on the other side of the ball. So I did think I did find that interesting. Uh, the other takeaway too, Jim, just overall is like the NFL draft in general is getting so, so much fun to bet on. Um, when yeah. you're looking at how things lead up into the weeks and, and everything, you know, when you're talking about Skaronsky and how how he was favored to be the number one offensive lineman and you have Paris Johnson and Darnell Wright going before, like, I think everybody felt like the Minnesota Vikings were going to be drafting a wide receiver. There was a lot of talk that Addison was going to be there. He was plus 200 on the FanDuel Sportsbook leading up. I know you were on Twitter talking about the CJ Stroud and and Houston Texans thing, and not too many people had them drafting a quarterback, but it was like everything that we thought of after the season and leading up to was them drafting a quarterback and also just the chaos that ensued for the rest of the other 31 picks. Shout out to the Dolphins who didn't have a first round pick for tampering. But, uh, you know, I I think it's just (laughs) getting so fun when you can look at these markets especially the week leading into where there's so many people who feel like they're surefire decisions um and really i think it's being one of the most um under talked about things is how you know profitable you can be from taking some swings on some things in the nfl draft in general yeah you were talking about the cj stroud thing i mentioned on twitter i was like tracking what his odds were to go second overall and like they were shorting throughout the day and like Someone, a, a former coworker, like, thank me. He's like, hey, thanks for pointing out the Stroud thing. I was like, no, no, no. I was not t- saying to bet it. Um, I was like, because like, I always <laughs> get nervous about steam chasing because it means you're getting the worst. You're not getting the best number at any time. Um, like if it goes from 750 plus 750 to plus 450, that means you're betting it at a, at a much worse number. And so I was kind of like, I'm tracking this. I am not recommending you bet this. I'm glad this person sure. profited off of me phrasing that poorly. Um, but I was like, no, 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 I was not trying to get this to happen. I was just like, I like CJ Stroud and I wanted him to go second. I wasn't saying to bet it. So I don't know. Um, yeah. it's, it's, it's an interesting event. It, it's wild. It was so fun to watch that throughout the day. Um, I work with, a, a Austin Cass, the Colts fans. We we're talking about, uh, the Colts and he wanted Stroud to fall to four. And it was just like, oh no, Stroud's odds to go second are going up. And it's like, ah, just slowly watching the dream fade away. But I mean, he got Anthony Richardson. So, you know, I guess it it works out in the end. Yeah. No, absolutely. I mean, time will time will tell, right? But I think, yeah, it's it's going to be a fun one to kind of monitor how how all these how all these guys do. Um, the the other thing, quickly, Jim, was just yeah. I I really don't know what's going on in the NFC South. Um, it's actually kind of <laughs> concerning. Like I and I, I'm not saying anything to the tune of like betting on them because I don't trust any of these teams. But I do think that there is kind of like an underlying like message there if. Bryce Young can be what the Panthers want him to be. Like the favorite right now from win totals perspective is Atlanta. They're sitting at eight and a half. Um, and we know, I guess we'll, we'll see what the quarterback position holds for them through this off season. But, you know, they're getting a running back in there. They've got playmakers on offense and, and the defense side of the ball, if they can be healthy, but it's like, you know, we thought about how, how much, Tampa has meant to that division and you're looking at the Saints and what they did in the draft and kind of some head scratchers as well there too um but it you know and and not having the regime of of Sean Payton to be able to carry the load with right. him um for a long time as well too so I think that's going to be a division that we definitely want to watch and monitor um because I do think it's up for grabs quote unquote um for whatever that's worth so we're going to go through some win totals we like later on. Uh, I have two NFC South teams, one in the over category and one in the under category. You may or may not have touched on both of them, but we'll talk about that later on. Let's talk about the Eagles. You mentioned them and what they did during the NFL draft, and uh, they made a lot of noise. Obviously, the Jalen Carter pick, Nolan Smith as well. So 
The Eagles generate a lot of buzz. And as a result, their win total is now 10 and a half. There is minus 140 on the over. And that's a big number, Ryan. But it's yeah. also the NFC where we know there's not a lot of great quarterback play. And the Eagles, maybe the defense is young, but we've seen the quarterback play be proven so far. Do you think there's still value in either the over or the under here? Or has the value dried up thanks to how much buzz the Eagles have gotten? Yeah, I think it's dried up, Jim. I don't think, I mean, really the the lean here is the over for, for me personally. Um, it seems about right. And you're looking at this team that just won 14 games last year. And you're thinking even, even with the, I mean, granted, they made a ton of moves in the draft and bringing in DeAndre Swift, all, all of that good stuff. And it just feels right. It feels appropriate, which is when I see that, I'm not usually willing to bet it because right. um, I think the, the juice isn't worth the squeeze when you're looking at minus right. 140 that on the over. I don't I don't see this team going under those wins unless there's a significant injury um, and probably would have to come to Jalen Hurts. Um, if, if anything, maybe on the defensive side of the ball, that could affect some things. Um, I do think, though, that, you know, with Dallas being better, uh, the Giants seemingly getting better, um, and the commander still being there for what for whatever that's worth. Um, I do think it, this will be a fun division to to kind of monitor. So for me, it's a stay away right now, but it yeah. does feel appropriate, and I can't you know really fault people who want to get in on that number because it, it seems right. I could not agree more on it being a stay away. I have it at ten and a half exactly um, in my win totals. So I think that it's important to remember that yes, like the the guys the Eagles got are awesome, and they addressed important positions. I think that Jalen Carter, with his ability to affect the pass, is an important position. Even if DT is not necessarily an important position, like he himself is important. They addressed important positions. They got good values. They seem to be. Very intelligent with how they drafted. It's important to remember they did lose a lot of pieces on defense in free agency. So to me, this is more so making up for lost ground for what had already happened in free agency, more so than adding to a team that already went to the Super Bowl last year. So to me, that's the way I viewed it. So I think that 10 and a half is the right number. Uh, minus 140 is pretty tough to get to an over for me. So I agree with you where it's a stay away on the Eagles, despite the fact they did a great job. I respect the heck out of their draft, and they were definitely uh, a team to highlight from this past week. Now, one team that was noteworthy, not during the draft, but for what they did leading into the draft, was the Baltimore Ravens. Locked up to Lamar Jackson long-term, got that settled, and their win total right now is 9.5, minus 122 on the over there. We now have certainty on Lamar, Ryan, but it's a very tough division. So what's your read on this win total for the Ravens now that we know – who the quarterback will be here. Yeah. For people who've been following me and the stuff that I've been doing uh, here covering the spread and, and otherwise, I think the Ravens are always a team that I'm looking yeah. to uh, attack, um, when, mm -hmm. especially when the market's not on them. I mean, minus 122, you'd like to see that number a little bit better. But when you're looking at nine and a half wins, I mean, Lamar Jackson has only lost 16 games as a starter. Jim, the Ravens were eight and four with him last year. And um, <laughs> without Lamar Jackson, they, they don't seem to find success. Uh, Tyler Huntley was a flash in the pan two seasons ago, and he wasn't able to get anything going last year. I think they they knew that they had to try, do everything that they could to bring this guy back because he's such an electrifying player on the field. I think that he has become, you know, kind of the heart and soul of Baltimore uh, fandom in general. Uh, this team has, this team and city has rallied behind him so much. And so when I'm looking at it, yeah, I mean, the Bengals are always still going to be there. I think the Steelers, you know, definitely are going to make some noise and we'll see what Deshaun can do for the Browns. But I think for, for this, when you're looking at um, over nine and a half wins and you look at what Harbaugh has done um, in his tenure there, and you look at what Lamar's done in his tenure, like, like how are we not, you know, thinking that this team can get to 10 wins every season with Lamar being healthy on the field? Like the other ancillary pieces for me on the offense do not matter when you're looking at if this defense can stay healthy. The defense has really been able to, you know, carry the load for them. And, you know, it doesn't matter if Antonio Brown's out there, Odell's down, out there, like J.K. Dobbins. Like as long as Lamar's out there, this team has a chance. They got Mark Andrews. So um, I'm loving the nine and a half wins here, even at that price. Yeah, uh, minus 122 again on the over here. I have them at 9.9 .9 wins, and that is despite the fact that this division is tough. Uh, so if I just sort by power rankings instead of wins, all four, yes, four AFC North teams, including Pittsburgh, are in the top 14 in my power rankings right now. Pittsburgh is 14th, uh, but you have uh, Baltimore and Cleveland both inside the top 10. Cincinnati is two, 
behind Kansas City. That might be maybe you shuffle them around the Bills, but like this is a tough division. And I still have the Ravens at nine point nine wins, which I think says all you need to know about what I think about Lamar Jackson, where I like him a lot. And I am very skeptical of Odell, but you give him if you look at Rashad Bateman, Odell Beckham and Zay Flowers with Mark Andrews versus whatever on earth Lamar was throwing to last year, when, as you mentioned, they were eight and four with Lamar and they had a very efficient passing offense in that time. It's really hard not to be enthusiastic about this team. Now, it might not be enthusiastic enough to bet the over on their win total, but I think this is a team that has upside. So if you're looking for other markets, looking at uh, conference championship markets, they're 10 to 1 to win the AFC. I don't know if I can get there quite just because, again, I think their odds to being in the wild card and uh, playing uh, in that opening weekend or playing on the road in that opening weekend are pretty obvious. But I think they're an upside team more so than a floor team. So I think that's the way that I view it is. I do like the over uh, nine, nine and a half. Again, I've got them at 9.9, but they're an upside team for me and a team with ceiling. And it sounds like we're on the same page there where they're a team that is going to be a a contender, a factor, despite a loaded AFC. Definitely. Um, And you're looking at the season awards there, like he's six favorite to um, be the MVP and things like that. Mm -hmm. When you're looking at those top six, um, you know, MVP races, you got to look at the win totals on the other side and see how that equates. And, you know, nine and a half is a pretty low total for somebody who is thought to be the sixth favorite um, of MVP. So I always love to look at the correlation, as you know. Um, And so that's one thing that has me um, looking at the over nine and a half wins there. Yeah, uh, the favorites for MVP are an AFC quarterback, an AFC quarterback, an AFC quarterback, an AFC quarterback, an NFC quarterback, and an AFC quarterback. What a brutal conference. What a brutal way things have been distributed there uh, across that. Let's talk now about some win totals, Ryan. Let's start on the positive side. When you look at the win totals right now at FanDuel Sportsbook, which ones have you interested in taking the over for right now? Yeah, you mentioned the Cowboys at nine and a half. I think that's that's very intriguing. Um, knowing just how they've been um, over over the course of time with Dak Prescott um, at the helm, there, I think that they have a lot uh, to prove um, from the offensive side of the ball standpoint um, and things of that nature. Um, with the way that this season kind of played out, it is minus 150, which doesn't feel all that great. But I do think that there um, is some merit there. Um, the other team that I was looking at, and if I can find it here, we scroll down in the positive side, um, which is going to kind of feel gross, Jim, but like the Rams at uh, over seven and a half at plus 132, mm-hmm. like I'm interested in that number for sure. I get it. Like Stafford's been banged up dealing with injury, but, you know, missing for Co- Cooper Cup as long as they did all of the narrative behind Sean McVay and is he you know bought into the team does he even want to coach this team anymore is he coming back he does come back it just feels like in the McVay era like not seeing this tent this team hit this total if they're healthy is just like it, it, you know it kind of it kind of speaks to me um and especially with you know the Cardinals are struggling a little bit um I think the Seahawks you know have definitely made some pl- splash plays on that end but the the NFC West is is an interesting one so I think at plus 132 I'm definitely willing to take a chance on that number um the other one too was the was the Broncos in the AFC West if we flip it over there um mm-hmm. at over eight and a half I mean Sean Payton is gonna have this team you know, re- ready to roll. I think that it would be pretty disastrous if we think about him coming into that into that fold um, and them not hitting on nine wins and not being in contention for the playoffs. And that's really what it comes down to, right, is you're thinking about teams who can make the playoffs and look at what the wins they'll need. And that's how I look at win totals. And so yeah. over eight and a half wins, they, they're going to need that in order to play in the playoffs in the AFC. So plus 106 there at that number uh, feels pretty good to be getting in on the Denver Broncos. Yeah, I want to go back to the Rams because they have the 10th easiest schedule by my numbers for this year. And it's because of what you mentioned with the NFC West being pretty poor. I think Arizona has a shot to be the worst team in football, depending on Kyler's health. If Kyler can't go, they are no talent. Um, I honestly like I have Kyler projected for half a year, which might be low. But with that, they are the team in football by almost a win. Um, if they were to get more Kyler, that would obviously yeah. increase. But <laughs> 
Um, they're pretty rough. And you get two games against them. That's interesting. Uh, the Seahawks, I think we can all be pretty high on Geno Smith. We all respect Geno. I think that they've made some good moves, but you know, there's always uncertainty there. And then uh, with the 49ers, we're not sure on Brock Purdy. And if it's not Brock Purdy with his with his elbow, it could be Sam Darnold. So I understand that there right. is a lot of room for upside there in the NFC West. A couple ones that stood out to me. Uh, I want to start things off by going back to the N- the ASC North. And I think Cleveland is interesting. They're over nine and a half is plus 112. And I think there's value in that cool. number because you look back to last year, uh, Deshaun Watson came back and was pathetic, which from a shot and of perspective was great. Um, huge fan of him struggling and that team being bad in that time. But now they've had a full year to mesh full year to get healthy on defense and things like that. It is a tough division, but their schedule's actually not that bad. And so as we're talking about Baltimore before I've got them at 9.9 wins. I have Cleveland at 10.2. That's despite the fact Baltimore is higher in my power rankings but it's because Baltimore schedules a healthy amount tougher. Uh, Baltimore schedule is the 13th uh, toughest by my numbers, whereas Cleveland is 24th. So the schedule favors Cleveland over nine and a half plus 112. I think that one is interesting to me. It's not fun to want to have to cheer for the Browns <laughs> right now, but like I do think there is value there. The AS- NFC South team, we we're talking about them before, that I like the over for is the Saints actually. And I would say this number has been mm-hmm. people are not on board with me here. So I might not bet this one now uh, over nine and a half is plus plus one sixteen. That has been lengthening. I think there is a shot that gets eight and a half with how much this number has moved. I don't think it's super, super likely, but it's possibility. And you could get potentially get to plus one twenty or so over nine and a half. But Derek Carr for all his flaws has proven he can command a pretty efficient passing offense this defense had so many injuries last year. It was still pretty decent. And they did lose a ton of pieces along the defensive line during free agency, but they replaced them via free agency and then peppered that position in the draft. And also, I feel like Michael Thomas, like there's at least the upside case there. I'm not banking on him like being an upgrade and being a legit piece here, but it's a possibility. So I think the Saints at plus 116 over nine and a half makes sense. I do like the Browns uh, over nine and a half at plus 112 too. I think if I'm looking for optimistic zones to go to, I would go there. I do think the Cowboys as well, as you mentioned, Ryan, another team I like. Any thoughts for you on the Saints or the Browns though? Yeah, the the Saints one is interesting because I, I kind of was – it's a stay away for me. Um, yeah. I, I was kind of in, intrigued in, in the under, um, yeah. but you know, at minus 142, I'm not, I'm not that sold there yet. I think for me, right. it's going to be, how can, how does Michael Thomas come back on this team? Because yeah. I, I, I am waiting for that future market to come out for comeback player of the year. And I oh, think yeah, that's okay. very, a in, in very intriguing one um, to hit, you know, usually, and we, I think we've talked about this together before where you're looking at injuries and things of that yep. nature. It's kind of like a pseudo injury, kind of just like he hasn't been the same player for quite some time, but I, I, I digress. I do think that's an interesting one there. Um, the other team that you were talking about, Jim, remind, I'm sorry. Browns. The Browns. Yeah. So the Browns, I mean, you know, you, you think with the Browns and with any team in the NFL, right, if you got the quarterback position, that at least accounts for something. And so I think there were a lot of times last season where we saw Watson be able to bail this team out um, in some regards. So it's it's just kind of tough for me because I'm just looking at them overall in the unit, especially with those starters, the 22. And I just, I'm just not seeing, I'm just not buying into the the talent necessarily. And yeah. I thought they really could have done some stuff in the draft. Um, even, even, you know, granted how they mortgage the future for Deshaun, right. but still being able to make some, some picks there in the mid rounds. And I just wasn't, wasn't convinced. Um, now, and you talked about it, like the AFC North, we'll, we'll see, it's going to be a tough division. Um, so that's what kind of wor- worries me about the Browns. But again, it's like, you got the quarterback. Um, so that can account for, for something, especially in close games. I mean, the under is too, it's too juiced up at minus 140 for right. me to take a shot there. Um, so I think for me, it's just going to be a classic stay away um, as well as Philly. And if we're choosing a team to root for in the AFC North, they're not 
I'd rather root for the Ravens over nine and a half than the Browns. That is uh, that is for sure. Okay, that was the sunshine and roses, Ryan. Let's make it dark and let's talk about some unders. When you're looking at unders, you like at FanDuel Sportsbook. Which one stand out to you there? Yeah, I think the Tennessee Titans at minus 115 at under. um, I've I've been talking about them a lot. And so I got to put my money where my mouth is um, on that one. Uh, The Tampa Bay Buccaneers at under six and a half plus 104. um, Very intriguing to me. I I still am unsure about what is going to happen at the quarterback position um, for them. But exactly. So if we, you know, if we're getting plus money on that, I'm, I'm willing to. Uh, kind of take a shot there. Um, the other team that I was looking at, let me scroll back up here. Um, <clears throat> so, yeah, I mean, the the only other thing that I was looking at was Houston, um, yeah. where, you know, five and a half is the number. Uh, also with the Arizona Cardinals, they're five and a half too. So I think that's interesting. But Houston yeah. under five and a half wins is plus 18. Um you know, I think that that number is skewed to how they just did in the draft and bringing in CJ to bring in Will Anderson and making some moves there. Um, but they also, you know, gave up a lot to be able to go back up and get Will Anderson, too. Right. Uh, so we'll see um, what comes to fruition. I would I would think that they're more um, apt to be able to be winning in 2024 than in 2023 so i'm willing to take a shot on them to say that they'll be you know a top three pick drafting again um here uh this year so at plus 118 kind of liking that number yeah i had the houston texans over win total last year and that was not a fun ride so uh uh their (laughs) their tie with indian week one really killed me i knew that we were playing with thin margins and that did not help so um i don't want (laughs) to be back on that ride again i think like I've shown value in the over, but I just like uh, it's tough. It's tough for sure. Unders that stand out to me. Uh, the first one is actually going back to the NFC South. And I want to see your thoughts on this one. I like Atlanta under eight and a half at minus 110. Um, I'm yeah. not as low on Arthur Smith as most people are because people get frustrated with fantasy stuff. And I think that they let that infiltrate their thoughts on him on a real world coach a bit too much. But it is a third round quarterback going into. Uh, the full year as a starter, he does have some really fun pieces around him. And I think that they will be like a, a fun team. They've done, they peppered a lot of money at the defense. They had the second easiest right. schedule by my numbers, but it's still really tough for me to get to eight and a half wins with how much ground they had to make up on defense. And with a third round quarterback, uh, third round, second year quarterback. So I think right. that they're fun, Ryan. I just don't think I can get to eight and a half wins. So I like the under there. What are your thoughts on the Falcons at eight and a half? Yeah, I, I, I like that as well too, Jim. Um, you know, we'll we'll see what Ritter has in the in the tank, and even if that's the, the direction that they choose to go, as we're still a couple months away um, from the kickoff of the season, maybe there's something else that could come to fruition that we're not thinking about. But I think as it currently stands here, um, this is a good number to to get in on the team um, that really, you know as as well as they have done as far as getting some pieces there that are exciting on offense and really shoring up the defense we t- we're talking about it. it starts at the quarterback position and if you have any uncertainty like nine wins is a lot so yeah um we'll, i'll i'm with you there to try and take a shot on the under yeah the other one i had mentioned or that i had in my notes was the patriots under seven and a half and even money um Feels bad to bet under seven and a half on Bill Belichick. Like that seems like sacrilege is like a <laughs> football fan, but yeah. the offense had its major issues last year. The piece they brought in to make it a better offense, like Mike Gesicki, some of the other stuff they've done. It's not really doing a whole lot for me. Now having like a competent offensive coordinator who doesn't hate the quarterback and vice versa, maybe yeah. that will be enough, but, and I think their defense is going to rule. I think their defense will be really good again, but I don't think that's enough to get seven and a half in an AFC East. That is very tough. Like I have the Jets in line at their win total, uh, then 9.8 wins. I have Miami at 9.4 wins. Uh, Buffalo is at 10.2. So like AFC East is very tough and the toughest, the toughest schedule in football right now by my numbers belongs to the Patriots. So under seven and a half at even money, I think that's the other place I want to go. It's just, it is mentally tough to like, bet that low on bill belichick given how good his track record is i know we want to like poke fun but like 
he's a really good coach and it's tough to to be this low on this team definitely no i think it, it's going to be interesting do you think that they're better than last year or about the same I think that they will be better on offense. I just think it gets negated by hopefully healthy Tua and negated by Aaron Rodgers and negated by other aspects of their schedule. Uh, Because again, it's the toughest schedule in football. So I think that they'll be a better football team if we can grade them like in a vacuum. I just don't know if that will translate to wins the way it wanted to. Because like looking at the rest of their schedule, they play the so they play the AFC East, which is tough. They play the AFC West. So they get uh, like their home games are against the Chargers and the Chiefs. I don't know if they can win those even in Foxborough. That's pretty tough. Uh, they get, yeah. I believe, the NFC East too because they have. I see Philly, Washington, Dallas. So they must have. Yeah. So they get the NFC East too. So if we're mm-hmm. high on Philly, we're high on Dallas. They get Philly at home too. So like a lot of their home games are difficult. So there aren't a lot of like easy baked in wins on that right. schedule. Yeah, and I just look at it from last year of them going eight and nine and really just like in, when you look at the season and you you go back and I, I'm thinking to myself, how did this team get eight wins? You know, right. and I do think <laughs> they're better this year. Um, now, you know, granted, there were there was some, you know, I think, who did they have last? The, the NFC uh, North they had last year. Right. Um, I'm, I'm looking and then uh, AFC East. But yeah. Or AFC North, excuse me. They play in the East. Um, so I think it's intriguing. I think that they will find themselves in more games than not. And I think that's going to be the frustrating part when we look at the win total years. Like, right. they could really just, you know, with the defense and the way that that defense plays and how opportunistic they are, bringing in Bill O'Brien, like, you know, they're going to be, in, and they have to, right? They have to in order to compete with Miami, with New York, with Buffalo. So right. that that's going to be another one that's a stay away from me at this point in time. But I think, you know, one of those things that we talk about long shots, you know, would it surprise you to see the Patriots kind of make some noise there? Because, you know, that's going to be the thing because of their yeah. opponents. Like if they're able to put up some wins against these teams, it's going to be like, oh, OK, like is can we buy into Mac Jones? Like is Bill Belichick right. back? I, I can see those yeah. narratives start to start to come to fruition in 2023. So that's fun. Yeah. Uh, again, betting against Bill Belichick is not fun. So <laughs> we'll see how that goes. Right. But um, definitely fun to have these win totals up and definitely fun to talk about the, them with you here, Ryan. That's all that we have here for today on this episode of Covering the Spread. But again, back again later on tonight, talking some Kentucky Derby. We'll talk some golf and NBA for tomorrow. But Ryan, want to thank you for swinging by once again, as always. And looking forward to talking to you again in the near future. Talk about some more NFL. Absolutely, Jim. Always a pleasure. See you next time, bud. All righty. That is Ryan Williams. Check him out on Twitter at Ryan Alexander underscore W. I am on Twitter at Jim Sanas, J-I-M-S-A-N-N-E-S. Back with you later on today to talk about post draws for the Kentucky Derby. We'll talk to you all then. This has been covering the spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network. <laughs>